Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vivahash Kumar Vaid and today in this video we are going to discuss about the osteology of thoracic vertebra. The thoracic vertebra is identified via the presence of the costal facets on the side of the body. So in the thoracic region we have 12 thoracic vertebrae and in which the 2 to 8 are typical type of thoracic vertebrae and first 9, 10, 11 and 12 thoracic vertebra are a typical type of thoracic vertebrae. So let's see in the detail. This is a typical type of vertebra and you can see here this is called the body of the vertebra and behind the body this part is called the arches and when we observe the body you can see here it is heart shaped and the anterior posterior diameter and the lateral diameter of the body are roughly equal. On the each side of the body you can see here it bear two costal demini facets here this is two costal demini facets which present on the each side of the body in this side also it is present a superior costal demini facets and a inferior costal demini facets the superior costal demini facets is large and present on the upper border or nearer to the pedicle here this is called the pedicle and it is articulated with the head of the upper corresponding rib. In the same manner you can see here this deminificate is called the inferior costal deminificate and this inferior costal deminificate is small and it is articulated with the lower next rib. Then you can see here this foramen is called the vertebral foramen and this vertebral foramen is small and circular. Then we will talk about the arches of the vertebra. This, so this is the arches of the vertebra. So first we will see the pedicle. Over here this is called the pedicle and this pedicle connects this arches to the body and the upper margin of the pedicle here you can see here this margin is called the superior vertebral notch and this superior vertebral notch is shallow while the inferior vertebral notch over here the inferior margin of the pedicle forms the inferior vertebral notch and this inferior vertebral notch is deep and narrow this pedicle which is directed straight and backward then we'll see the lamina here this structure is called the lamina and these two lamina overlap and form the spine behind here this is called the lamina then the superior articular process here you can see here this is called the superior articular process and this superior articular process project upward from the junction of the pedicle and lamina you can observe here this superior articular process which project between the junction in between the pedicle and the lamina. This superior articular process wear a articular facets and this articular facet is called the superior articular facet and this superior articular facet is flat and are directed backward and this direction which permit rotatory movement of the spine here you can observe the both the superior articular facet which flat and directed backward. In the same manner you can see here this process is called the inferior articular process and this inferior articular process are fused to the lamina and it also bear anteriorly a articular facet and this articular facet on the each side and this articular facet is called the inferior articular facet. And this inferior articular facet which directed forward then this process is called the transverse process the transverse process of the typical thoracic vertebra are large and it is directed laterally and backward you can observe here the direction of the transfer process is laterally and backward from the junction of the pedicle and lamina here this is the pedicle and the lamina from in between this pedicle and lamina this transverse process is arises and 
the anterior surface you can observe here the anterior surface of the transverse process nearer to the tip it bear a articular facet over here and this articular facet which articulate with the tubercle of the corresponding rib on the both side on the nearer to the tip of the anterior surface here you can see a articular facet which articulate with the corresponding rib in the upper six vertebrae the costal facets on the transfer process are concave and faces forward and laterally and in lower four the facets are flat and faces upward laterally and slightly forward so you can observe in this vertebra this articular facet which is concave and faces laterally then in the last two vertebra the articular facets are absent then the spine you can see here this is called the spine and this spine is formed by the fusion of the two lamina over here and the spine of this typical thoracic vertebra is long you can observe here the spine is long and it is directed downward and backward the fifth to ninth spine are longest more vertical and overlap each other the upper and lower spines are less oblique in direction first the body which is heart shaped and the side of the body it bear two costal demifacets then you can see here the pedicle then superior articular facets inferior articular facet then here you can see here the costal facet over the transverse process lamina and the spine so this is all about the bony feature of the typical thoracic vertebra now we'll discuss about the attachments of the typical thoracic vertebra the upper border of the anterior surface of the body and the lower border of the anterior surface of the body this part which provide attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament in the same manner the upper part of the posterior surface of the body and the lower part of the posterior surface of the body this part provide attachment to the posterior longitudinal ligament then the upper border and the lower border of the anterior surface of the lamina this is the lamina and here this is the anterior surface of the lamina so upper part and the lower part of the anterior surface of the lamina which provide attachment to the ligamentum flava then the transverse process here this is called the transverse process and this transverse process give attachment to the first the lateral costo transverse ligament and this lateral costo transverse ligament attach over the tip of the transverse process over here we have attachment of the lateral costo transverse ligament then the superior costo transverse ligament which attach over the lower part of the tip of the transverse process so here we have attachment of the superior costo transverse ligament then the inferior costo transverse ligament along the anterior surface here we have attachment of the inferior costo transverse ligament so from the tip we have attachment of the lateral costo transverse ligament from the lower part we have attachment of the superior costo transverse ligament and from the anterior to this costal facets here we have attachment to the inferior costo transverse ligament and the intertransverse ligament and the muscle which attach over the upper part and the lower part of the transverse process and the levator costi on the posterior surface so this posterior part of the transverse process which provide attachment to the levator costi then the attachment over the spine so this is the spine and this spine provide attachment to the supraspinous infraspinous ligament they also give attachment to several muscle including trapezius rhomboidus latissimus dorsi serratus posterior superior serratus posterior inferior and many deep muscle of the back so this is the attachment over the spinous process so this is all about the typical type of thoracic vertebrae now we'll discuss about the atypical type of thoracic vertebrae 
this is the first thoracic vertebra and the first thoracic vertebra is also called as atypical thoracic vertebra and the body of this vertebra resemble that of the cervical vertebra and it is broad and not heart shaped the anterior posterior diameter of the body is lesser than the transverse diameter along with this you can observe its upper surface is lipped laterally here the upper surface is lipped laterally and beveled anteriorly here laterally it is lifted and beveled anteriorly then you can observe on the each side of the body here a complete costal facet and this complete costal facet is called the superior costal facet and this superior costal facet which articulate with the head of the first rib and the inferior costal facet is a demi facet for the second rib then the spine of this first thoracic vertebra here this is called the spine and this spine is thick long and nearly horizontal then the superior vertebral notch here this notch is called the superior vertebral notch which is present the upper margin of the pedicle this is the pedicle and this superior vertebral notch are well marked as the cervical vertebra this is the transfer process and the anterior part of the tip of the transfer process which we are a facet and this facet which is concave on the t1 to t6 vertebrae this is the ninth thoracic vertebra and the ninth thoracic vertebra resemble as a typical thoracic vertebra all the features are same except that the body has only the superior costal demi facet you can observe the body on the each side of the body it bear only a superior costal demi facet over here and the inferior costal facets are absent then the facets on the transverse process here this is the facets on the transverse process and this facet flat on t7 to t10 vertebrae this is the 10th thoracic vertebra the 10th thoracic vertebra resemble as a typical thoracic vertebra except that the body has a single complete superior costal facets over here you can observe here the body has a single complete superior costal facet on the each side this side also and it extending on to the root of the pedicle you can observe here this superior costal facet which extending on the root of the pedicle this is the pedicle and here this is the root of the pedicle so this is the 10th thoracic vertebra this is the 11th thoracic vertebra and the body of this 11th thoracic vertebra has a single large costal facet on the each side you can observe here the body has a single large costal facet on the each side and this costal facet which extending on to the upper part of the pedicle you can observe this costal facet which extending on to the upper part of the pedicle this is the upper part of the pedicle and the transfer process of this 11th thoracic vertebra is small this one is called the transfer process here and this transfer process is small and has no articular facets over here this transfer process is absent of articular facet and sometime it is difficult to differentiate between the 10th and 11th thoracic vertebrae this is the 12th thoracic vertebra the shape of the body pedicle this is called pedicle and the transfer process and the spine of the 12th thoracic vertebra are similar to those of the lumbar vertebrae the body bear a single costal facets over here you can observe the body of the 12th thoracic vertebra which bear a single costal facet on the each side which lies more on the lower border you can observe this costal facet which lies more of the lower border 
Then the transfer process. This is the transfer process of the twelfth thoracic vertebra. This transfer process is small, has no facets over here. You can see here the transfer process has no facet, but has the superior and the inferior and lateral tubercle. You can observe the transfer process has a superior, inferior, and the lateral tubercles. Now we'll discuss about some clinical importance of the thoracic vertebrae. Failure of fusion of the two half of the neural arch result in the spina bifida. Sometimes the body ossify from two primary centers. and if one center fails to develop on half right or left of the body is missing this result in a hemivertebral and lateral bend in the vertebral column or scoliosis in the young adult the disc are very strong however after the second decade of the life degenerative changes set in resulting in weakness of the annulus fibrosus when such a disc is subjected to strain the annulus fibrosus may be ruptured leading to prolapse of the nucleus pulposus this is commonly referred to a disc prolapse it may occur even after a minor strain in addition to prolapse of the nucleus pulposus the internal derangement of the disc may also take place the disc prolapse is usually posterior laterally The prolapsed nucleus pulposus press upon the adjacent nerve root and give rise to pain that radiates along the distribution of the nerve such pain along the course of the sciatic nerve is called the sciatica the motor effect with loss of the power and reflex may failure disc prolapse occur most frequently in the lower lumbar region its also common in the lower cervical region from the 5th to 7th cervical vertebrae so this is all about the features attachment and clinical importance of the thoracic vertebrae i hope all of you understood the topic thank you for watching